Hello everyone, it's Gary Ray Smith, The Knitting Man. This is episode five of our podcast, which is entitled How to Knit a Fair Old Vest with No Pattern and No Floats. Welcome back to episode five of the Knitting Man podcast. Um, this week we're going to start a uh, a new project. So we're going to start knitting a fair old vest off piste with no pattern um, and obviously no floats. And we are going to uh, I'm going to be casting that on uh, today in this episode. Um, the other things about this episode are that um, halfway through recording it, we um, we had Storm Eunice arrive in Cornwall here and uh, we lost power for a whole morning. So um, uh, it, we, we were quite disrupted for a while. The other thing you might notice is that my grandchildren were here for uh, a lot of the recording so you might hear a lot of children noises in the background um, and it, it was uh, Vera Atlas and Doris responsible for that um, and what else have we got in this episode uh, travels with my yarn has been really reduced mainly because of the weather here so we've got a little clip from last week where um, me and Atlas went to the King George Memorial Walk uh, in Hale Estuary so it, but it's going to be really small this week um, and I will be answering some questions but they're going to be mixed in with the stuff about the uh, farewell jumper and uh, the other thing was that Mrs Smith was really concerned that last week um, I, I might have been a bit too frivolous particularly this that's episode four people um, particularly when I left little snippets of her at the end when I was doing the video editing I didn't edit her out I left them in because I thought they were funny and um, she thinks I ought to be a bit more serious a bit more business like about what I'm doing but um, I, so so for this week I'm going to try I don't know how long it'll last so this is episode five and, and we reviewed our four previous episodes and um, and we thought about where we'd, we'd like to be going in the future and um, and also we looked at everyone's feedback and and obviously I've got two strands of knitting. I've, I've got this sort of farewell stuff that I do completely off the cuff make it up as I go along I like to call it off piece knitting and then I've got stuff that's that's planned and graphed out and and so what we decided to do is that we we would start one project of each because there's some people and I had a letter this week or a, a comment this week from what the zeal and they said I'm relatively new to being a knitting addict but I'm keen to get to the point where I can improvise color work as I go and I imagine they're talking about um, like the farewell stuff that I do so um, I want to cover that so um, in order to cover that what I'm going to do and we're going to start today is to um, cast on a completely new off the cuff wing it make it up as I go along feral jumper uh, vest and then at a later date it might be next week or the week after what we're going to, going to do because i had another comment this week and this was from before time 
and they said, can you make a video of converting a painting to a chart? And that's what these sorts of things are all about. So we're going to, we're going to have two different strands, but we're going to run them alongside. So so on different weeks, we'll be we'll be looking at my progress on these two different projects. So we're going to we're going to start with a drawing and the drawing that we're going to start up start with. I know we were talking about my next blanket in previous episodes and we were talking about polar bear, tigers and trees. But a lot of people have been waiting for uh, this hair. To be made into a pattern. Now, this actual blanket is huge. And, um, and so what we're planning is we're going to redraw this pattern and I will repaint the pattern and we are going to make it into a smaller blanket that's manageable for somebody that's just starting to do this stuff because there is a lot of work there and you're carrying the yarns for hundreds of stitches at a time without changing colour. So I'm, what I'm going to do is make something much more manageable for people. But people that are particularly after this pattern have asked me um, again and again for it. And um, it, it's a pattern that I just haven't got round to doing. So uh, starting from today, so we'll get we'll we'll do that here. Um, and that, but that will be in a week or so uh, till we start that. Uh, but this week, starting today, we're going to do a feral vest or start a feral vest. So uh, before I cast on, um, I'm going to uh, go through a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to pick some colours because although as I as I move up the jumper, I might still add some more colours, but I, I thought I'd talk about colours. Now, um, I I want to make something that I'll wear. So I'm actually going to make this farewell jumper for me. So um, I thought that would be a good thing to do. So as I move up the jumper, I will be changing colours, but I want to, to make something that I would wear. Um, now generally I wear very boring clothes. I wear um, blue clothes. I wear grey clothes, blue clothes. <laughs> I, I, you know, my palette, the, the palette that I actually wear is um, really reduced. I wouldn't want anything too acidy or anything that was too in your face. Um, but then again, when I knit, I want to knit something that's a bit more interesting. So I, I, I wouldn't mind something that's got lots of colour in it. I, I would wear it, um, but just occasionally. I wouldn't wear it every day. Um, so I'm going to make something that's quite bright and quite colourful, but it's not going to be shouty um, because... I'd, if it was too shouty, I would never wear it. So I put together a group of colours earlier. I'm going to see if I can, if you can see those. So I just grabbed sort of what were in these baskets, really. I didn't really go to my stash. We've just got a load of baskets that are on the table here. Um, so um, those colours, when I put them together, I thought they're all lovely. They'll work really nicely together. And they kind of reminded me of Marie Wallin uh, colours. Um, and if you look at her fair isles, they're um, tonally very similar. Um, so there's nothing shouting out. There's no, there's no blacks. There's nothing too harsh. There's no really sort of bright whites. Um, and... And again, there's no sort of acid and shouty colours. So I put I put this group of colours together 
And then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some accent colors. So I'm going to add some small little pops of color. Um, nothing, nothing too extreme. Although, you know, I'm going to go sort of bright pinks, bright greens, um, maybe sort of some tonally lighter colors. So blue, and I might even go as far as putting some black in there and some red and some purple and some oranges so and greens so but there won't be a lot of those there will just be a little tiny bit of those colors so um, that's the palette that I've decided to use I'm adding a few more there so that is the color palette for this project well, I'm losing them. There you go. Now, the next thing that I need to do is some maths. And I've got a 42 inch chest. So I need to add because I don't want it really snug. So I've got to add what's called positive ease. So I want to add about 10% positive ease. So um, that means that, that it's loose on me because I, I want it loose on me. I don't want it tight. So I want it to come out at about 46 inches. So that's a sort of a large, extra large in sort of an English somewhere between large and extra large in a, a British man's garment. So I know that if I use three and a half mil needles and this thickness of yarn, fingering weight yarn, that I knit eight stitches to the inch. Now, when you look on the Jameson's website and you look at their spin drift, which is a similar weight of yarn, they say it using 3.25 needles, 3.25 millimeter needles, um, that to the 10 centimeters, which is four inches, um, that's 30 stitches. So mine comes out of 32. So I'm getting 32 stitches in that. So I must be knitting quite tightly but maybe it's the way that I carry yarn that makes it that third, I get 32 stitches to four inches or a hundred mil. So for my 42 inch chest, I need to knit 46 inches. I knit eight stitches to the inch. So if you times eight by 40 stitch, 46, then I need to cast on 368 stitches. So as I said in my last video, um, my daughter bought me a couple of these uh, Likey, sets of Likey um, needles, um, fixed circulars. And uh, one size, uh, they're both 3.5 uh, millimeters, but I've got a 32 inch one and a 60 inch one. Well, the 60 inch one will probably be just slightly too big. So what I probably want to use is the 32. But if I use the 32, it's going to be really tight on the, on the needles, the knittings. So when I want to show you, um, it, 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 I'm not going to be able to sort of spread it out. So in reserve, I've got another set of uh, three and a half mil by 32 inch needles so that I can spread them out. But I'll show you that in a, a, a future episode. I just lost them there. So, but first of all, to cast on, I'm gonna cast on, I think I said last week, um, cast on with a slightly thinner yarn. I mean, meant a thinner needle. So I've got some um, three, millimeter needles that I'm going to cast on with first. 
So um, I'm going to kick off with um, these. Um, this is like really old pair of um, needles, um, three mil. And I've got this yarn on a cone, uh, which is a Rowan four ply. Uh, don't know a lot about it. It's uh, shades 635 and it's 350 grams and it cost eight pounds when it was bought. Um, so I'm going to cast on with that grey because I've been looking at, I, I refer back to, you know, previous stuff that I've done and I'll, I want to do the rib in a darker colour. So I'm going to do the rib in something like this. I was looking at this and it's sort of pinks and greys um, and, and reds. So I was going to do the rib in that. So that's why I've started and I picked to start off with um, quite a light colour, mainly um, so that um, you can see what I'm doing um, when I come to joining up the ends. So what I'll do first of all, I will cast on my 368 stitches uh, in the grey um, and then what I'll do is I will um, purl the whole row in the grey back. So I'm not joining the ends, I'm, I'm just knitting it flat. So I'm going to purl all the way back in the grey and then I'm going to start working with the pink and I'm going to do corrugated rib which was, if you need to find out how to do corrugated rib, it's in episode four of the Knitting Man videos. Um, so I'm going to do corrugated rib in those two colours for one row before I join the ends. And then I will get back to you because um, that's an important point. Um, but before I cast on, um, Mrs. Smith has reminded me she's out of the room at the moment. So I'm a lot better when she's in the room. Yeah, I've got somebody to a bit, a bit rapport with somebody, you know. Anyway, um, lots of people have been bigging her up this week. You don't need to really. She, I big her up enough. Um, so yes, it's it's like a handmade mug. It's uh, I didn't make it. It's like a studio pottery mug. Very nice. Very cute. So before we look at the start of my knitting, uh, where I join the ends together to make it circular. Um, we're going to go to Hale first for Travels With My Yarn.
That was a, a short little um, travels with my yarn at Hale there. Um, if you've not seen us before, or even if you have, um, it it means the world to us if you subscribe. Um, uh, we love your comments, so keep your comments coming. Um, and also, if you could hit the like button, if you have enjoyed it, and hit the bell so that you receive um notification of any new videos uh, that we make and now back to my vest i've cast on then i um in the gray and then i've uh, uh pulled a row in the gray and then i've knitted a row of the uh corrugated rib in the pink and gray those two and now I'm going to join the ends. Now it's really important when you join the ends that that you, all your knitting straight. So if I join these ends and there's a twist in this piece of knitting like that, I will end up with a Mobius loop. And if you've ever created one of those when you've not wanted to, um, you'll know what I mean. You don't want to do it. It's no fun. I mean, basically, um, you know, the whole thing's rubbish. So I've just checked and I'm pretty certain. I'm just looking over it again before I join my ends, just to check that everything's nice and straight. And that there's no twist in it at all. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that, Joe, but there isn't a twist in that as far as I can see. It all looks good. Okay, so now I can join these ends. Now it's it, it, it's important as well when you because you can still put a twist in when you come round to the next row. So um, that's it really, that's all I wanted to say. Um, uh, the Knitting Widow's just come in and she's just seen what I filmed earlier um, where I was choosing colours and I was saying oh, I wanted to keep the colours subtle but then have a couple of kick colours in and then I started piling up all the colours and she said it was like Cracker Jack, you'd have to be a certain age to know what I'm talking about. and. Um, and she said, what was the point in that? Because you've just picked every single colour in the rainbow. Well, I kind of have, but, but you'll, know, you'll know what I mean as I, as, as I do the, the knitting. Thanks, Jo. Uh, we've just had a, a, a massive power cut. So uh, we lost about four hours there to Storm Eunice. And um, Mrs Smith, she was just saying, you still really haven't explained your colour, uh, your colours and um what it is i think is if she doesn't understand something then i know that i'm not getting my point across so um i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to colors and i'm gonna say right so i've picked the group of colors 
that I want to use. Now you might decide that you just you would like to wear something that's more subtle than that. So you might choose to use the colours that I had first of all in the basket. You might decide that you want something that's um, brasher than that, more exciting. You might want to knit something that's more exciting than that. Uh, so you want, might want you know, to knit the bright in your face acid colours and there's nothing wrong with that. Or you might decide that you want to knit and you know I'm quite tempted by this one myself. The idea of really dark, really moody colours with maybe just a little pop of colour here and there. Um, or you might even think um, you might want to do it in pastels. Um, you know lovely sort of sky blue, baby blues and uh, pale greens and yellows and pinks and that would be good too. So it's it's not about um, the particularly about using the colours that I've chosen here, although I would say get as many colours as you can. And, and these sort of projects are, are great stash busters. And, um, and also, I, you know, I'm a big, I buy a lot of my yarn in charity shops. And, I, you know, I buy little, little tiny half a ball or whatever. Um, and, and that's the sort of thing, build up a collection um, all the same way. I mean, I, I tend really these days to just buy um, sort of fingering weight yarns and DK weight yarns. So I'm, I'm, I'm buying um, two, I might buy thinner because I can run them, run them along together, but I tend to, um, to buy just thinner weights. Um, after a while, I found with with my yarn collecting that I had stacks of like cream yarn. So so these days, usually when I go out buying yarn, I'm looking for colours that I haven't got. Well, there aren't many colours I haven't got, but I'm I'm looking for uh, colours that are different. So, but yeah, that's what I would suggest. I would suggest that. If you wanted to start one of these projects, get all the all your old ends of yarn and um, have a look at, at what's in your stash and then maybe go out and buy a few colours maybe. So uh, while we're on the subject, um, I had a question from Trudy this week and she was asking how I organise my stash. So I think what she's saying is, do I organise it by wine, wine rate? Do wine mate? I don't even drink wine. <laughs> I'll start again. Where you got wine in your head from? Uh, so, so while we're on the subject, I had a question from uh, Trudy this week, and she asked how I organise my stash. Well, I think she wanted to know. Uh, do I organise it by colour or yarn weight? Um, and the answer is, I don't really organise it at all. In actual fact, I mean that is, I mean that that basket that I showed you earlier is how it's organised. It's organised like that, so it's pretty haphazard. I think uh, Mrs. Smith's got quite a lot of my yarn organised. She has a selection of black dustbin bags and she likes to pile my yarn into those and tuck them away into the dark reaches of the loft never to be seen again in actual fact i've got so much yarn up in the loft but i can't get to them because of the records in the way so one day i would like to get a few of the records out of the way create a path through the loft to try and extract some of my yarn um but um Really, it does show the love that Mrs. Smith has for me that she has, actually hasn't put those black, black bags out for the dustbin men. What? And um, so at this point, um, I think I need to talk about, uh, because when, when you come back next week, I should have uh, quite a few rows done, 
hopefully. Um, so I'm going to going to refer back to Sarah's question from last week and the week before and Sarah's question was how I choose adjacent uh, feral patterns now you can get books like um, that's an Alice Starmore one which um, I've never I've never used I've never referred to um, anybody else's pattern I never I never use anybody else's pattern I just make them up as I go along um, but you know, Alice Starmore, brilliant. Um, if you can get any Alice Starmore books, get them because they're great. Um, I've got loads, always worth a look. Um, so what I do now when I'm doing feral patterns, uh, the important thing is that the that the pattern is an even number. So um, like eight stitches or 10 stitches or 12 stitches or 20 stitches. So what, um, but, but you've got two colors. So if each color is an odd number, that adds up to an even number. So if I, if I start a row, I think there's postman here, Joe. Don't think that's getting through the door. Oh, it didn't get through the door. Um, so um, it, I might put um, a stitch of red and then one stitch of red and then nine stitches of black, one stitch of red, nine stitches of black and so on. So that might be how I start. So. When I say I'll, I'll just I'll just pick numbers like that. So I'll I'll just go nine black, one red, nine black, one red. And that's the first row done. And then all I've got to do is decide when I come to the next row what I want to stick on top of them. So in for in this instance, I've gone three red, seven black, three red, seven black. And then when I come to the next row, all I have to do is decide what I'm going to build on top of it. It's really easy. And so you don't have to re refer to anything. You can just keep rolling and you just make the decision at the beginning of each row what you're going to do to build on top. Well, I will explain this in further depth in future weeks. Uh, so that was the postman bringing a package for Joe uh, to make. Uh, it was icing, packet, packet of icing that um, has been delivered for Arthur, Arthur's cake, Arthur's birthday cake. Uh, she's baking him a, a Sasquatch cake. If you know what that is, please let me know in the comments below. Um, so this is where I am uh, with my rib so far. So I started with a grey and a, a pale pink and then I've moved up into a slightly dark pink, a mid pink and now I'm in a quite a bright pink and I've changed the grey into a black. So what I'm actually doing um, is, is doing a fade with the pinks um, and I think what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go up into reds with that on on the pinky red side and on the black gray side I'm already starting I've just gone into it a lot you can't really you're not going to be able to tell I don't think but I've started to go into a a, a lighter gray again or it's a mid gray uh, and so I'm going lighter on the um, gray so in actual fact they they might even tonally meet by the time I get to the top of the rib so um, I'm going to refer back, um, I'm, I'm thinking about pattern and I'm thinking about how I structure pattern. And uh, with uh, this jumper, um, which is called Mellows, um, the, I've not completed the patterns necessarily. So I've started, I've started to knit 
this diamond, but I've not completed the diamond. I've started another pattern in the middle of it, if you can see that. So, I mean, normally with Ferrile, you would complete that pattern and then start another pattern afterwards. But I haven't completed the pattern. And, um, and, and this is something that I do a lot. Joe, if you've got um, Swallow's Jumper there. And I, I think Swallow's Jumper is, uh, is, is where it's probably most visible. So I, I start to build up a pattern and then I stop. And the, I, there's an idea behind it. Um, so I don't know if you can see with Swallow's um yeah you can yeah so like here i've done that same thing i haven't finished that pattern before i've started another pattern so it's almost as if all the patterns overlap and where it's really visible is there across there and i think it's more visible there because there's probably you know that might be and i'm guessing now but that might be a nine stitch pattern and that might be a seven stitch pattern. So it's really quite clearly visible along where those patterns join because they're completely out of sync. And the reason that I do that is to throw the eye around because otherwise it's just pattern, stat on pattern, on stat pattern on pattern. And it's just, it's boring. But when you start cutting the pattern up, then the eye flickers around it, it it's got it, it's got nowhere to land and that's why i think um that they look more interesting and that's what interests me doing that kind of thing um the other thing is that um i had it i picked a yarn and i don't know if you can see it there but it within the within the white there are speckles of gray and that is where um a a bottle of Indian ink exploded in a bag. I, I seem to have problems with things exploding in bags all the time. I was talking about a, um, um, a, a pair of needles that came apart in my bag last week. Um, but yeah, the ink came apart in a bag that that yarn was in. So that yarn is all speckled with ink. And um, so again, that's throwing the eye around. And and this is the really, really pretentious bit. Um, I was actually, when I started doing that, I was thinking of um, music. I was thinking specifically of The Catherine Wheel by David Byrne. And in The Catherine Wheel by David Byrne, it, it, he like builds up rhythms and and then you, you you just get into it and you just get, you know, you're tapping along to rhythm and it just stops and he starts again and slowly start, he builds up this rhythm. And um, so there's there's not like gaps between the music, but he, he does this thing where you, he builds the rhythm and stops, builds the rhythm and stops. And I was actually thinking about that and it seems absolutely so pretentious to say that I was thinking, Mrs. Smith's laughing just to live with it um so that's the, the thing is as well recently because i had it on vinyl um uh, the, the catherine will uh, by david byrne and and then i i was i was in my studio and i'm not allowed to film in my studio because it's too much of a mess she won't let me film in the studio but i I was in my studio and I put on Spotify, I put um, that David Byrne album on and um, it puts adverts in. So it builds up the rhythm and drops you. And then instead of starting another rhythm, it puts an advert in the middle. So it don't work on Spotify at all, it's rubbish. Um, so next week I'll get back to you and show you where I am with my new off-piste feral vest. If anybody wants to knit along with me, I'd love that. I would really love that. Um, but yeah, share it with me. 
Um, I, I don't know what the best way of you sharing it with me, maybe on Instagram or something. Um, but, you know, I'd love to know that other people are, are, are trying it. Um, and maybe next week as well, we'll start looking at this was this was um, the one of the original drawings. I did a couple of brown, I think, and a couple of blue. One of the original drawings that I did for um, Atlas's blanket. So um, what happened was it I, I originally what I do is I, I do loads of these drawings and I, I call them uh, ghost paintings or ghost jumper paintings because the majority of them because there's not enough time in the day the the majority of them will never see the light of day they, they won't get made just because I don't have the time so so they're ghosts of jumpers that might be um, so this was originally a ghost jumper but it still is a ghost jumper painting because uh, it hasn't been made into a pattern um, it became uh, this drawing for Atlas's blanket which became Atlas's blanket and so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to make it into a smaller so I might start this next week I'm in my brain I'm stuck I'm starting it next week I'm thinking it's going to happen um, I'm going to start a redesign and I'm possibly the idea is that I'm going to make a blanket obviously a, a square oblong blanket with that design that's much smaller and then um, potentially if I make it small enough it could be that jumper so I'm going to uh, but I might have a little redesign a rejiggle I don't there's certain things that I'm you know uh, I'm not enjoying about it that I, I think I could improve so but you might see me going through that process not knitting it but going through the redesign process starting from next week so just to clarify because Mrs Smith likes clarification what we're going to do is we're going to redraw uh, that bunny picture um, and then we're going to chart that bunny picture and you're going to see the process of how I turn that drawing um, or painting into the chart and then we're going to make that into a pattern that all people will be able to make a baby blanket from that. So that's the end uh, for today. Um, please subscribe. Um, it, it really means a lot to us. It, it, uh, it's going to encourage us to make more videos. Uh, please leave us comments. We love your comments. Um, and we'll see you next time. So uh, it's good night from me and it's good night from her.